Hey guys, welcome back to the Home Beauty YouTube. Um, this platform is such an important one for me and the brand, uh, making sure that we are giving you all of the educational content. This particular um, platform with YouTube, um, I really wanna make sure they're really quite amazing tutorials for you and giving you all the tips and tricks. So make sure you click the link, subscribe, um, hang out, comment. Um, I'm here to engage with you guys and, and have some fun. So let's have some fun in that. I have got some, I've got a wedding today. Um, a little trick, if you have worn makeup in the past couple of days prior to a makeup that you're trying to do, just make sure you have a micellar water, even though I've thoroughly cleansed a number of times, you just never get as much of the mascara off as you hope. So it does actually really impact the makeup look. And that's, I've literally cleansed three times since wearing mascara last. So it just shows you if you're wanting a really clean makeup look to always make sure you get in there before you start start the makeup with a micellar water or an eye makeup remover. Um, I'm currently using the Cinch micellar water. I use that a lot. I also love the Neutrogena um, eye makeup remover. So I'm just gonna do that and then let's get into some moisturizing and have some fun. So I'm just popping on some eye cream. I do this every morning and night, just particularly now as I'm getting older, I've pushed past 35 and I've really significantly noticed my eyes um, are getting a lot more crepier and wrinkled and I can control wrinkles every part of my face through good skincare um, treatments um, and Botox, but I'm really struggling to do that obviously around my eyes. So eye creams are so important. If you haven't got one in your system, please make sure you add one. Going in with a moisturizer now, I really like using this one as a pre-makeup moisturizer. I love my Embrolease, which I use most days. Um, I think it's in my makeup bag, so I took it on the road yesterday. But this one is the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Light. Um, magic, sorry, Magic Cream Light. Um, I really love it. Uh, it's got a nice little um, light bounce off it, so without it making your skin oily, which I think is important. The full um, Magic Cream that she has, I find too rich for me and clients, particularly in Australian conditions. So this is a good one. My lips are quite dehydrated. I had a few drinks on the weekend, always the way. I love this lip butter. This is the um, Summer Fridays lip butter. It is very luxe and lush. Um, really good if you have quite dry lips. It's got a really lovely emollency to it. Very creamy um, and hydrating. Okay, now into my favorite part of it, which is the, I still love that I really should be marketing it better by having a nicer tube, but you know me, real and honest. And this is the sample shield that I received ages ago. It's even been crimped in the lab, not in the machine. So it doesn't look as fancy as the rest, but waste not, want not. And I want this one, so I'm not wasting any of it. So this is the primer I'm using my hands in this situation. I did my first wedding back after having obviously all the time off with lockdowns and every single person in the bridal party had the primer, which was absolutely amazing. What I'm really loving that I'm hearing, obviously, you know that I designed this primer to be something that you wore underneath makeup, obviously to create a really great base, but give you that really nice backlighting from behind. Backlighting means you sort of, you put the illuminator behind the foundation so it kind of pops through rather than being on top and really being very strong. This is all designed to be like that glowy fresh skin that I'm really known for, um, but subtly. But the thing I'm really loving the most is that you're all saying that it's actually really making you realize how much you love your skin. So you're not actually wearing any foundation, which is crazy amazing. I think also because the key ingredients are so great, skin health is improving as well. So I'm so happy about that. Um, I've obviously got a wedding today. I need to look great all day long. So I am going with the foundation. I'm going to go in with the YSL. This is a Touche Clat Le Tint. This is in the shade B40. I have fake tan though. So let's just see. I could probably go up a shade. I'll show you actually how you can do it. If you've gone up a shade, I definitely recommend always having a summer color and a winter color and then mixing as you need. I'm pretty consistent throughout the year because I don't really have time to go to the beach, which is so sad. But this year I'm hoping to make it a bit more of a priority. So in this situation, it's probably a little bit paler than my body because I always match to my body, not to my face. So I'm going to pop it down and let me show you how I'll build it up throughout the makeup. 
Okay, so going into concealer now, I'm going in with the Makeup Forever. This is a really great concealer if you find you get a lot of wear and tear. This is in the shade 21. I'm not gonna use too much of this, just enough to kind of open up space. I'm lucky that I don't actually have too many dark um, under eye circles. Mine's more redness on my face, so I can use one concealer to kind of conceal and to open up space uh, where if you have darker under eye circles and that's a focus for you i absolutely at that this stage here go in with a color correcting concealer which should be something that maybe a little bit warmer than your face color if you've got darker under eyes and then you go in with your lighter concealer or your brightening color now I'm going to go in with some translucent. This is the by Terry Hydra Powder. It is really soft and light. I'm just going to go under my eyes and set that immediately for a couple of reasons. One, I don't like to wear and tear it too quickly under the eye. So it's important because we move a lot in that area that we set it before it starts to move into the creases. And also because I'm going to go into eyeshadow second, which is normally not what I do, but this is more of a natural eye look. I can get away with it. Um, I really want to make sure I focus on uh, if there's any fallout, it can be brushed away. If it's wet underneath there and there's fallout, it'll be very hard to move out. Okay, and now I'm going in with the Laura Mercier. This is the Candle Glow. This is in the shade 3 in summer or when I'm tan. This is my base colour. I'm just going to lightly put this all over. This is where I'm going to boost up my foundation so I don't have to go in with a darker foundation. I can just boost it up with a bronzing powder normally in a face product, not in a bronzer. I get a lot of requests from people. I obviously use a lot of creams for myself and I have particularly used creams throughout COVID lockdowns because I don't necessarily need something that's going to last a long time and not going out. But today I'm having a big day with work and then tonight. So I want to make sure it lasts. And that, for that, I would always use powder products. So I'm going to go in with it. I've obviously powdered down now my foundation to set that down. When you add a, a powder to a liquid, it, it, it dries it out essentially. That is really, really important. If you think about it when we apply heat to a cream what happens it liquefies so if you don't set down your powder now it doesn't mean it has to be dry 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 i just mean you can do it subtly you know you can use something like the hourglass ambient powders which are a lot more softer and they have a kind of glow to them but it's really important if you want your makeup to last to ensure that you're powdering at the start it might feel a bit heavy and full and drier to start with but as the day warms up particularly in australian conditions you want to make sure that that warmth in your skin will start to soften off the powder and will start to become more skin-like. Also recommending using like setting sprays, which will really help that as well. But I really advocate making sure you're using a powder as part of your routine. So now going into bronzer, I'm just using the Fenty. This is in Shady Biz. This is a great color. I love her bronzers. They're brilliant. Just going to start to sort of sculpt out my face. Everyone's face is different. So please, I know the general rule is around and then under, but remember like how do you go down straight or do you hook up? It depends on your face shape. If you're wanting to hook, you're kind of wanting to bring out. So I'll do that for people who have got like um, narrower faces. If you have quite a wide face, you're wanting to bring it down towards the corner of your mouth to elongate that space. We're using light and dark. We talk about this heavily in my masterclass program, which we are about to restart. Um, tickets are available uh, via Home Beauty. I'm oh, sorry, Home uh, Hillary Hayes Makeup. They're available in uh, Melbourne. I will be uh, looking to do some around Australia uh, in 2022. Now I'm wanting to go a bit more prettier today. Uh, I've got a client, I like to sometimes working with the client and what she uh, is about or he, um, but I know that she likes really neutral tones. So I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm wearing white. I know that's a bit, um, I was thinking, oh, is that bad? But uh, she really appreciates neutrals. And the other outfit I was gonna have was like African print. So uh, I thought this was a good compromise. So I'm just going in with the NARS. This was a Christmas palette. This was the Vacancies, Vacants, I guess. Um, is this like a soft pink? Any soft pink will do. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk would be a similar color to this. 
As a makeup artist um, and as a consumer, I have to say the, the loss of Becca in our community actually has really rocked me. Um, a lot of their products was, were definite staples in my kit. Um, one of them being the um, Skin Perfector. This is in the shade Opal. I'm still going to use it. I'm sorry. I really love it. It doesn't, you can't, it's really hard to find something that works like that. This is a powder. Um, I'm really sad about it. So yeah, I'm really hoping that something happens and you know we start to see similar products popping up out in the industry okay now i'm going in with the iconic setting spray i'm just going to do that in this now so that it just sort of dries out while i'm doing the rest of my makeup setting sprays are so important so important um, to make sure you kind of, so you know how I was talking to you before about putting liquids on your skin and needing to dry them out to make sure they last. If you really don't like that powdery look on your skin, but you need to set it down, then absolutely use a setting spray. That re, I know it sounds so crazy, you're turning a liquid to a powder to a liquid, but you, in order to kind of create the layers that really grip and hold, it's really important that you do those steps. So I've created liquid, I've then powdered, and then I spray down. And what will happen is those powder, um, more like, powder particles sitting on top of the skin will flatten because the liquid kind of reforms um, them a little bit. Give you all the tips and tricks on this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do my brows. I'm gonna use the Refi Brow Pencil. I'm gonna do this before I do my eyes because I like to sort of see where my, my brows are before I get going on it. So I'm just gonna pick up my brow just to start with because I can see my hairline and I come off the front. I don't wanna to go to the very start because it will make it too heavy in there. So I wanna come off a little bit and I start with a line underneath. Really important, I focus my attention on getting this arch area in here nice and clean and sharp because this is going to really create nice lift in this area of my face. Now I go to the front and I go really lightly. Now I talk about this a bit. It's really, really important that I remind you that everyone's brows are different. Your hair density is different. The way it's structured is different. My brows are really, really thick in that spot, but there's nothing else anywhere. For me to make them thicker, I know it seems crazy, but I've got to go quite dark with them. And then I use the spoolie on the back end and I run them and reverse back through to break up the pigment on my skin. I would love to be able to do techniques that mimic real hairs, but it's just not going to work with my hair shape um, and density. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and put some brow gel down. This is the Refi Brow Gel. This is a very glue-like gel. So if you don't like really strong hold, I think she's kind of designed this, Jess Hunt has designed this to be like almost like a laminated brow. Because my hair's so thick where it is, I can get away with using a product like this um, because I really need to. So important that you back comb the hair so that when you come back through, it's all like totally coated on both sides. So you get such better hold. Okay, let's get into eyes. So now I'm going to quickly run my brush that's got powder over it on top of my eyes to neutralize any oil that might be already existing on there. Now I'm going in with the MAC Paint Pot in the shade Groundwork. I love this color. This is a neutral matte color. This is what I use as a primer. Priming is exceptionally important if you're wanting something to last. You could use this just by itself if you're wanting a really natural look on your eye, but this will look super natural because it's a cream, but because it's a primer, it grips down really, really well. So definitely think about your choice of products. If you're wanting something to last in heat environments, you can just do that with some mascara instead of actual eyeshadows. If you were to use a traditional cream eyeshadow, most likely it would move and crease where these are designed to dry down. So perfect combination. Okay, now I'm going in with the Fernanda Havas, um, the Nude Collection Eye Palette. I'm going to go in with Ma Amor, Mi Amor. I was like, Ma, that's like not the right way of saying it. Uh, and I'm going to mix it with a tiny bit of silk, which is a pale nude colour. 
uh, really clever in that you can use those sort of colors to make them like less strong. So if you're really pale and you've tried to use this color and it's too strong, mix it down with the other matte color and that will neutralize um, and will make it softer. It won't make it as strong. If you always have palettes that have a lighter nude matte color and you can adjust any of your eyeshadows. I'm using, um, this is the Ariel and Morphe collaboration. I'll be interested to see if this becomes an ongoing thing. It was so successful. I'm just using it, it's like I want a fluffy brush like that just to blend through. So windscreen wiping and focusing attention out here. Getting that same color and just going underneath the eye. Now what I can do is keep my eyes straight, not overly like look at it. I can then start to see how the eyeshadow and how it's sitting on my eye. When you look at it normal, I can see I haven't gone high up enough on this side. So I'm gonna use that brush and just see where it needs to go. Always sitting back and just assessing it. I can see that needs to be a bit stronger. And then that can come out here a little bit just to sort of soften that gradation out. Just taking an extra couple of seconds to assess things. It's such a great way of figuring it out. Now I'm going to go in with La La Land. It's a shimmery kind of um, paler pink. I want to like reference this dress through the makeup. I might just go in with a bit, a tiny bit of amaretto just in this center bit so it's not too light. Just warms it up a little bit. Okay, now going in with mascara, I have to because I've got very, very, very thin, fine lashes. Not many of them. I'm going in with the Marc Jacobs Eye Primer. This is really important to me so I don't transfer, but also I get length and curl to my lashes. I'll do one side compared to the other and you can see the difference. See the difference? Huge. Okay, now going in with lipstick. So it's really important you take off any excess lip conditioner that you have on. It's marinated in there now, the lips are feeling way more conditioned. But if I leave that on and then go put a lip product on, there's so much like slip and movement that the product will just move and wear away. So it's important to come back to a neutral, um, dry lip. So I'm going in with Lip um, Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury. My makeup's complete without that random hair. So this is a reminder, if you don't own a lip liner, please invest in one. This is one of the biggest things that I can advocate for you to get a lip liner, particularly as we're getting older, we start to lose the shape of our lip. We start to lose the pigment in the lip. So it's important to use lip liner to really redefine those boundaries on our lip and to give them, and they instantly look bigger. If you have um, particularly lined lips or you're a smoker or you're older and you have quite divoted lips and you don't get a smooth line, and if you also find it just takes ages to line your lips, what you can do is go like this, keep it really tight, so much faster to apply. This stage of the makeup towards the end that I can go back in, I'm just gonna get a little bit of powder in this zone here because it's moving around a tiny little bit. Now I'm just getting some of that face powder that I just used and I'm just popping it at the very highest part. I still haven't got my brows done yet from lockdown, so I'm just trying to shape them in as I can. Also, when I put my lip on, I'm actually not going to go in with, I need to wear a mask when I'm at the wedding, so I'm not going to go put on a lip, lipstick or a lip gloss. I'm just going to leave it as a lip liner and let it wear down naturally. But what I do find is when I put a lip colour on and I'm at the very end of my look, this is where you go back in if you need more blush. I am a huge advocate for lip liner and blush. I think they're two really underestimated parts of your makeup bag. It's really important if you can go back in there, I'm just going with more of a flushy pink, something a little bit more pretty. And I'm just going to hit the apples a little bit more. Just that little bit of extra boost can give you more vibrancy, more youth. 
more shape in your face. I know a lot of the things that are telling you to be putting your, um, your blushes out here and doing more of that. That's great if that's what you're looking for, but also if that's your arm um, face shape. For me, yeah, lift is definitely there and I absolutely put it there already, but putting a little bit of flush through your apples still really gives you that youth and the vibrancy that I think so many of us are missing. So, um, all done, all finished. I'm off to the wedding now. I'm going to show you quickly in real lighting what this looks like. It always looks very different on studio lighting. And then after that, I'm going to head off to the wedding. I hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure you definitely subscribe so you can see all of the videos coming through from us. Um, I'm here to make so much content for you. So if there's any particular specific tutorials that you would love to see, please comment below. Um, otherwise, have an amazing day and I will talk to you guys soon. So as you can see, this is the final look and it is way more natural under the natural lighting. Uh, you can see just really pretty flushes. This is something that can translate for any occasion, this makeup, but really remembering this is about how you can establish a makeup that will last all day. It doesn't have to look cakey, it doesn't have to look heavy, but I know this makeup is bulletproof and it can last for as long as I need it to. Take your powder with you, make sure you have it priming to make sure that you've really created strong foundations under your foundation. Um, but this is a look that I know will last and looks beautiful all day long. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys soon.